Correct. So welcome all of you for this two days live workshop of business intelligence using TAP. So today we are in day two and we'll see what are the topics we'll be covering in this session. Okay. All right. So today I'll be covering about functions, how we can actually use the conditional formatting. Then we'll see how we can export the visualizations or the tables. Then we'll see what is a group, what is set, and how we can use this action. There is something called as action, which is very interesting actually to make it to make your uh, uh, reports dynamic. And then we'll see what is a dashboard. We'll try to create one small dashboard, and then we'll talk about the story, right? Okay. <clears throat> Let me minimize the presentation and then what we'll do is we'll open tab. So we know how to install, then we know how to get the data, and then we also understood how we can actually try to create the report. That's what we understood in the last session. People, one minute. Just... Right. So, in the previous session, we learned about how we can import the data from Excel. That is by using this connect. Okay. So, instead of that today, what I'll do is I'll use this default data set, which is there in the Tableau itself. It's the same thing what I imported uh, in the previous session. I'm just trying to import. This one, I'll just click on this. I'll get this data. The same data actually, what we used in the previous session, but I imported that from the folder. Now I'm taking this from the default superstore, whatever we have the result, default data set from tab, right? Okay. So today we have few topics which are a little more advanced than what we discussed in the previous session. So what are those? I was talking about functions. When I was talking about groups, sets, then again, we have this actions, then condition formatting, and then dashboard, and then store. Right? So first, what we'll do is we'll understand how we can actually use these functions. What are functions? Say, in Excel, we have functions, that is, uppercase, lowercase, that is text functions. Then again, coming to this number functions, abs, when we have round, ceiling, floor, something like that. Then in, uh, you know, uh, for date function, we have date, month, year or something. Then again, if we come to this lookup function, there are various different functions in Excel. Similarly, if you come to Power BI, there also we have these kind of functions, but we call it as DAX functions, right? So here in Tableau also, we have similar kind of functions and they are actually classified again, exactly like what we have in Excel. But here we don't have any functions like uh, what we do in uh, uh, Power BI, that is, uh, um, calculated measures or say calculated the columns or calculated tables, nothing like that. Here directly we can write the functions and we can use that. But there are a few things what actually you have to take care when you are aggregating the values. So that is where you have to take care. I'll tell you how to do that. But first, what we we'll do is we we'll try to understand how we can create the calculated fields. We call it as calculated fields. For that, we use functions. Now I have. <clears throat> Let me just show you. I have one text file actually, wherein I have all the functions listed down. Okay, the common functions, whatever we use. Apart from this, if you want to learn, there are more other easiest way to learn the function. Say, for example, let me just go here to stab. Okay, so here I have all the columns. Let me just remove this table. I'll remove these two tables. All right. So let me go here. So just to make it very simple, I just remove those two. Now, if you see here, I want, say, for example, I have this customer name. Let me drag and drop here. You can see that I have the customer name here. Right? I want to convert this into uppercase or lowercase. Anyways, we know this function in uh, Excel, uppercase or lowercase, we'll say upper or lower. So how to do that here? 
how to write formulas here because we don't have any formula bar here, right? Here, the formula, the section, whatever we have, the calculated field. So we have to open that by various different ways. I tell you where all you can go and you can create this calculated field. Simple thing. Say first thing. Here, a very simple thing is I have this field. If you want to write any function on that particular field, what you will do? Go select this, right click, and here we have something called as create. And I'll say create field. Sorry, calculated field. Just say create calculated field. You'll get one window like this. Can you see that? It's a small window like this. This is one way. Okay. Now let me go here and give a column name. So we have to specify the column name. Now what I'll do is I'll just mention that as function upper. You can give any name. I'll say function upper. Can you see that the column name here? Right. Don't type the column name. It will come automatically and I'll tell you how actually you can get for other types as well. Now I'll go here in the beginning. I'll say upper of and I will close the bracket. Understood? Upper of the column name and I'll say okay. <clears throat> see? Drag it and drop it here. See? You can see that? Got converted to uppercase. This is one way of creating the field. That is calculated field. Second way, I have a small arrow here. Can you people see that? Here we have a small arrow here. Yes. So if you click here, see, I have this create calculated field. I'm just clicking on it. Then I'll get one window. But here I don't have any fields. If I go to specific field, right click, then I'll get the field in that particular, say, formula, uh, the, the window what we get here. But when I actually go here and say create field, I'll get only a blank, you know, formula, uh, window, whatever we have. I'll go here. I'll say function of say lower. Let's make it a small. Now you see, I'll say lower. You can use tab. And then I'll say customer. You can see that it will get listed. Don't type completely. Just use tab. Done. This is another way. Now I'll say, okay. Now I'll get that. The field here, so I'll go here, I'll drag and drop, see, smaller. You understood how to create the calculated field, that's all. Say either you can go right click on the field or you can go and click on that arrow and get that uh, window and you can create the calculated field. So likewise, we have so many options here. Okay, I'll just do some of them so that you can uh, go and practice it. It's very similar to your Excel formulas. Okay, all right. Let's say I want the um text say left mid and right in excel also we have this left mid and right similarly i can do so another way there is one more way of creating the field where is that let's say i'll go here to analysis there is one tab called as analysis here i have this create field say i'll go and i'll click on this create field see i'll get this window so either i can right click on the column or i can click on this arrow here in the data pad or i can go to this analysis and then i can create the calculated field. Understood? So these are the three different ways. I have to understand on which column I have to create the calculated field and then I can select and I can write by uh, create the calculated field by using the function. Now let's say I want I have this order ready. Okay. So for that if you to check what I'll do let's go here. Let's take this order ready. You can see this I have the CA hyphen 2020 hyphen some number. Say first two characters, middle four characters and last six characters. So what I'll do, I'll go to this analysis, create field and then I'll say function left. Left of order ID. Come on. It lasts for number of characters. I'll say then just say okay. Now I'll just drag this and I'll put it here. See, first two columns. I want last six characters. Then what will I use? Right. Remember in Excel, we have this. We already have done this in Excel and also in Power BI. So let's go here. Usually what we do is I'll just directly go here and you know create the field because it is easy. But suppose if you have practice, say I'll go here and I'll take or I'll say I'll go and click on this arrow and then create. That is left field. Now I'll go here. I'll say order ID right click and here i'll say create calculated field function right and here i'll say 
right of order ID comma six characters. Say, let me drag and drop. See, I'll get the last six characters. Right? If you want middle, then I have this mid formula. I'll go here and I'll say create calculated field. Say a function mid. Say mid. Mid of the column name, starting number, say one, two, three, four, say from fourth position, four characters. Comma, and I'll say, okay, see, just drag and drop it. So if you want to move this in the middle, just you can move this like, see, what's good. Right? We can do something like this by using this left, mid, and right, which is already there in Excel as well. But here, in Tableau, we have one more function, but a split. So what is split? Split means by delimiter, we can split the text. Now in Excel, a new formula has been uh, introduced that is text before, text after, remember? Yeah. So in the older version, we didn't have. Now in the newer version, we have this text before, text after. But here in Tableau, we have this split. How the split will work? Let me show you. I'll go here. Let's say order ID and I'll say create calculated field. Now here we'll say function split. Right. Now here we'll say split. And then we'll take the column name. It lasts for the delimiter. Now what's the delimiter? Delimiter is hyphen here in this case, right? So we have to put single quote, hyphen, comma. Now can you see that token number? So what is token number? Say, I have hyphen. It will divide the columns. It will split the columns. Now which part I have to take? Say, wherever I have hyphen, see here I have one hyphen, here I have one hyphen, right? In this order ID. This is first the token number one, token number two, token number three. Wherever I have the hyphen, it will separate. That is where I'll have this token number. Now I have to decide which part I need, the first part, second part, or third part. Let's say I want mid, middle, four characters. I'll say three, oh, sorry, two, close bracket. I'll say, now just see, I'll drag and I'll drop. See, understood? So you can do something like this. Sir. Now we understood about how we can actually create the fields, right? This is how actually you'll write the formula. This is how I actually I'll create a calculated field. Now there are a few things what you have to understand here. What is that? Let me tell you. Now, let me just go here. I want to edit. First thing is, I want to edit something. There are so many other uh, you know, calculations. I'll tell you one by one. But let's understand about the, the formula window, whatever we have, the calculated field, what we create, that window will study that. Let me go here. I'll right click on any of the um, you know field, what we have already created. Here, I have this edit. Can you see this? Click on this edit. It will give me the window again. Whenever you are writing any formula, make sure that it is correct. But how will I know that there is an error here? Say in um, Excel, what happens if there is any error? When I say I'll write the formula and click on enter, what happens? In that cell, I'll get that error message, whatever error we have done. But in this case, in Power BI, what happens when I say enter, if the formula is error, the entire column will become error. But here you just see if I do any syntax error or anything. See, the calculation contains error. Click here, say expected closing parenthesis or comma with parsing argument list for upper. That means there is some error here. It will also give me some red mark there. Like in word, we get the red mark, and that will get. So we can correct the formula here only. Okay, let me close the bracket. All right. Next, the next thing is now I have few things few formulas which I'm actually learning, that is the function I'm learning. But what happens? I want to learn something more. Or there are some formulas I want to understand how actually it works. I don't know how it works, but I need to go and search somewhere. You don't have to search anywhere for uh, the uh, calculated fields to work on the functions. You can learn in Tableau itself. How? Can you see that there is one small arrow here? Click on this, see? There is a help section towards the right-hand side which will help me in learning all the functions available in Tableau, all the functions. Now, there are so many functions here. I'm not 
you know, able to find, I can go, I can search. But still, if you think I want to categorize, click on this all, can you see that? I have so many different categories. Say, for example, I'll go to this number. Then it is filtered by numbers. Let me click here. Say string, all the string functions, whatever is there, that will be available here. Likewise, see, there are so many various different functions here, which will help me in understanding. How, let's say I'll go to this string and here I will click on this contains. Right, I click on contains. If you see here, it says returns true. If the string contains a, you know, substring, I'll show you how it actually works. So I'm just telling that if you want to learn something, you don't have to go and search everywhere. You can go, you can take this help section as well. Suppose if you still not understand, then there are more other ways. You can go to chat GPT. You can go to, uh, you know, my websites. There are many tutorials. Okay. You can also go to my uh, YouTube channel. There also you get so many functions about these kind of things. Okay. Right. All of you. It's okay. Now we understood about this field. Now let's work on some more examples. Because, say I tell you people, there are so many interesting functions in Tableau. Very interesting function. Say, we just saw one something plus contains, right? We have starts with, ends with, and contains. What does this do? I'll tell you, see, starts with, ends with, and contains. Sometimes what happens? I need to filter some data. Usually what we do in Excel, we go, we'll apply the filter and apply that uh, star mark. Or say, you know, we have that uh, option uh, filters. Go and click on text filter. Starts with, I'll say, A, B, C, whatever I give. Whatever the name starts with that particular text I gave, it will get filtered. But here we have a function. It's how how this will work. This will work by true or false. We call it as Boolean. Boolean means true or false. Now let me clear all this. You can go here. You can clear, say, Alt Shift Space if you press. If you go here, see, Alt Shift Backspace. Okay. If you press that, entire thing will get here. So that's the shortcut key. And don't worry, you can go here. You can just move your cursor here wherever the shortcut keys are there. It just show up. Okay, done all of you? So, okay. Now let's work on starts with, ends with, and contains functions. Let me take this customer name. Okay, there are so many customer names. I want all the names which starts with A, A, capital A, small A. Customer name, right click, and I'll say create calculated. Okay. Usually, I just minimize this because it will be like confusing. So, if you think you want that window, you can extend, you know, expand that and you can check that. Otherwise, you can minimize that. Usually, I keep it uh, minimized so that it will be easy for us to work. Whenever I need, I can enable that. Now, what do I need? I want to filter all the names. It starts with A. Okay. Say, contains and here let's say sorry starts okay. we'll say starts let's say starts with it lasts for a string that string is nothing but the column name the entire column name here I'll mention a a and I'll say okay done now I'll drag this and I'll drop it here. I just observe, it will give me true or false. Right? Now I can use this as a filters. How? Let me take this starts with and I'll put it in filters. Remember that filter, what it will give? It will give all the values. Now I want only to say, directly we can go. In filter also, we have that option, say, I'll go here, take this filter, and here we have this wildcard, and say starts with A, A, we'll say okay. This way also you can. There are many different ways. I'm just telling this is the function what we're using. In function also we can do. Done. Okay. Now, let me remove this. I want ends with all the name which ends with S has to be filtered. What I'll do? I'll go to this customer name, right click and say create calculated field. 
and here I'll say function ends. Now let me click here and I'll say ends with and then comma say yes. Single quote and then say okay. Let me drag and drop. So wherever I have the name which is ending with S will be true. If you want, you can go here. I just put this in filters and I'll take only two. See, all these are actually the names which are ending with S. If you want to change that, go here, ends with edit, and here I'll say ES. And say, okay, let's see. See. Got it? Contains. Contains means it can contain anywhere within the name. It can be anywhere in the name. Let's go here. Customer name and say create calculated field. Here we'll say function contains. And I'll say contains. Comma. I'll say ARB. Let me just remove this. Say drag and drop. So here we'll say filter. I'll take this true. See all these names. Somewhere in that name we'll have here. Got it? How we can write this calculated field? There are so many calculated fields, but you should also understand about the calculation. That also I'll tell you. Now let's go and see. I'll just explain. We have this finder. Find this. So finding which character or word. We have done this in Excel also. We have this len, len means giving the number of characters. Then we have the starts with, ends with, that we have done. Trim. Here, trim in Excel, what it will do is it remove all the unwanted spaces. But in this case, in Tableau, when I say trim, it will remove the unwanted spaces only somewhere in the middle. But if you want to remove exactly, say, left side, so you can remove that from the left side. Or if you want from the right side, you can remove from the right side by using L trim and R trim respect. Understood? So these are the text functions. Apart from that, there are so many other functions which you can go and you can practice that. Just select that and see the functions. The help section is there. You can go there and you can select. For date functions, say I have this day, month, and year. Anyways, we have this in the Excel as well. Then we have this make date. Make date is nothing but I have day, month, year in separate column. In uh, Excel, we have a function called as date, which will take year, month, and day, and it will convert that into date. Similarly, here also we can use the make date, and you can convert that. Okay, date add. We can add the dates. When I say date add, that means I have a date. I can add ten days for that. Date difference. A difference between two dates. Okay, today and now. Anyways, you know that today means today's date. Now means it will give me the current time. Okay. <coughs> date name. This will give me the name of that particular month, whatever we have. Right. Now, coming to this number functions and the aggregate function. This is where we have to be little careful. What is this? I'll tell you. We have, say, abs or ceiling or floor round. What is apps? Apps means converting negative number to positive number. Right? I have a negative number. Convert that into positive number. Let's work on that. Let me go here and I'll clear everything. What I'll do, I will take order right. Okay, I have the order right. And then I'll take profit. Okay, let me go here and says sum of profit. Go here, see that we have some average. So you can go here, you can change any of this. Let me just make it as let me just change this to sum. Okay, just see here, I have the total sum. You can see that in some places it says minus 19. Okay. That means it has to get converted to positive number if I use apps. So what I'll do, I'll go here, I'll create one function on profit. 
say right click and here I'll say create a calculated field. Right? So here I'll say apps say we'll name it as or say function apps. We'll name it as function apps only. So here I'll say apps of profit. Okay. My intention is converting negative number to positive number. Please, all of you, concentrate here. I'm mentioning apps of profit. Now I'll say okay. Right. Apps means converting negative number to positive number. Now what I'll do, I'll take this drag and drop here so that I'll get the number. Okay. Let's see whether it is actually converting negative number to positive number. You can see here it's positive number 9, 4, 89. Everything is fine. Let's come down and see if there is any negative number here. Let's sort it. Okay, see here. Have this minus one. Sorry. We will sort it based on this one. Duck. Let me just show you some negative numbers. Right. So you see, you can see this. We have this minus one. It's getting converted to minus one. But not in every places we have this uh, you know, uh, proper values. Say, for example, I just scroll here. See here it says 20, here it says minus 2. If I say here 123, here it says minus 1. So it's the same order ID, right? So it should be, say, minus 1. Here also it should be minus 1 only, right? But there is some problem here, right? What is that? I'll tell you what is the problem. Let me just interchange so that it will be easy for us. Let me remove the sorting. Okay, let's take the C. You can see that I have this minus 19. And here it says 23. I'll tell you the reason is when I'm actually writing the function, I used abs of profit. Right? But the value what you see here, this is the aggregated value. When I drag and drop any field in the canvas, that becomes aggregated. When I say aggregate, say so what happens at minus 19, whatever is there, the value can be like, uh, you know, uh, 1, minus 1, minus 5, then plus 8, something like that. So when I'm adding all together and then I'm getting here, I might get 19. But what I'm getting here, 23 is, it is converting all the value, whatever is there, into positive. When all the value become positive, then everything will get added, right? Say, for example, let me take an Excel file. Why I'm telling this is when you are actually, this problem will come only when you have this aggregate functions. Let me tell you. Say, for example, I have some values like this, say, 5, minus 8, then 10, minus 3, say 20. Okay. When I actually add this, how much I'm getting? 24. Right? But what we have done is, we are adding like this say, equals abs of this. And then I'm trying to add. So what will be the value? For it? Understood the concept what's happening there. Here I have 5 and minus 8. If I'm adding these two, it will become minus 3, right? Then minus 3 plus 10, it is 7. Then again, minus 3. What? 4. Then 4 plus 20, 24. But what's happening here, everything has become positive. It is being made a total that is 46. But what should be the scenario? The scenario is here, <clears throat> whatever values I have, right? Say, for example, let me increase this to 80. I can see this. It becomes minus 48. Now, for me, when I use abs, I should get plus 48, not minus 48. Then what should I do? I'm actually applying abs on which function, uh, which results, this sum. That means I have to apply 
the ads on the aggregated value, not on the individual value. You got the concept? Now what I'll do, I'll go here and then we'll say, right click, edit, okay? Here we should say sum of, Sum of profit. That means sum will give me the total. On that, I'm applying the apps. Now I'll say, okay. Let me remove this. Let me change that. Now I'll just take and see. Can I see that now? So wherever you see that minus, see. Now it will be proper. Now let me sort it. See. So please be careful with this particular calculations. This will happen only in the number functions. That is when you are actually trying to aggregate. So here we have the aggregate functions. That is some average, minimum, count, count D. We work on this count and count D. I'll work on that and I'll tell you what is this count and count. But aggregate function means it's trying to calculate the values, group it, you know, and get me the, uh, say, some average or something like that. But when I'm applying all these functions, say abs or ceiling or floor, it should be applied to the aggregate values when I'm actually dragging and dropping in the canvas. Done? Okay. Now, we'll see what this count and count D actually does. What is count? Count is to count. Count D means count distinct. Okay. So what is that? Let me just tell you. you go to this. Let's go to this. Tab blue. I will clear all this. Okay. All right. Now let me take the column region. I have this region. Where is that the region? Location. And I'll take this region. I have region. I want to count how many states are there. Usually what we do when I want to count the states, I'll go here, calculated field. Here we'll say count the states. Say count and I'll say state. Say okay. And I have this column created. I'll just drag and drop here. I'm getting this number of states, whatever is there. But people, I want the unique count. Unique count is here what happening. So central, if you go and check that, the number of times, you know, the states are repeating, that's also counted. It is just giving me the line items, how many times it is repeating. So it is giving me that particular count. But what I need is, I need the unique count. Then what I'll do, I'll go here and I'll say calculated field. Here, we'll say count distinct. Count D and then I'll say state. Say okay. Drag and drop. Can you see that? Right, understood? So these are unique counts. So likewise, we can actually try to work on the, cal that is calculation. So you have to know all these functions. So you can go one by one and you can study that. Depending on my requirement, I can actually use the function. So if you see here, I have, say, if you want to know how many, um, say how many line items are there in each state, um, in each uh, region, then use this count. If you want to know how many states are there, unique states, then I use count D, okay? Right. There are some more functions. What we'll do, we'll work on that based on some other topics as well. Let's say conditional format. So for that, we need to use uh, you know some functions. So that I'll tell you how to actually use that. Let me clear all this. <clears throat> all right. So before I move to the conditional formatting, again, still the functions are there. There are many functions which you have to use for conditional formatting. Conditional formatting is very easy in uh, um, say tab. Okay, but before that, did you people understand about how to create the functions? Do you feel it is easy? People online, how do you feel about creating the field? Is it easy? People? People online, now you can message. So you got an idea how we can actually create the functions? Yes. Okay. 
All right. Next topic we we'll learn about. Next topic we we'll learn about how we can actually use use this conditional format. What is conditional formatting? Conditional formatting means applying some conditions and then formatting the values. Same thing we have in Excel as well, right? So here I'll tell you in a very simple way how we can use this conditional format. Okay. Let me take this region. So we'll go with very simple example, very simple example, and then slowly we'll increase the complexity. So what I'll do, I'll go here, I'll take this region and I'll drag and drop. Okay. Done. Let me take this sales. Simple chart actually. I'll take this sales. Done. Okay. I want to format. Let's say I want to format one of the regions here. I want to format the region east fixed. I want to format the region east wherever it is east. I have to format that. What I'll do, I'll go to this calculated field. I'll take this create calculated field. And what I'll do, I'll say conditional format. I'll say region. I wrote one calculated field. I created one calculated field, condition formatting region. See the formula. Just say region equals east. That's it. I'm not saying region equals east. It will give me true or false. For condition formatting, it should be true or false, right? Now I'll go here. I'll say, okay. Now just drag this and put it in colors. Can you see that? East is getting colored. Can you see that? It's becoming orange. Now. What if I add more fields for that? Will that get formatted? I'll show you. Let me take this category and I'll put it here. Can you see that east values are getting highlighted? Now you do anything. Say, I'll go here and I'll take the segment. I'll put it here on as a column headers. Can you see that? This part is getting highlighted. Yes. You understood? So condition formatting. So wherever I have this east, that will be colored now. Will that work for the column headers if I go and you know move here, see east. Move the segment here, see east. Understood? So this is one simple thing. Now let me remove all this category, segment. And I have this east. Let me just put this here. Right? Now go to the show me. I'll click on this bar graph. And then we we'll take this condition formatting and put it in colors. Can you see that? It's is getting highlighted. Convert this into column chart. See. Now, if you want to change this to central, I'll go to this formula. So, where is that? Conditional formatting. Right click and here I'll say edit. Now, I'll change this to central. Say OK. See? Got you. Understood? So this is how actually we can create the conditional formatting. All right. Let's work on some more conditional format. Let me remove this. I'll create one table. Let's take this subcategory. And then we'll take segment. And I'll take the values as sales. Okay, I need to highlight all the values which are about 75,000. Right, so what I'll do, I'll go here, select, and I'll say calculated field. So here, we'll say conditional formatting, we'll say sales. I'll say sum of sales. Why sum of sales? Because the values what you have here is all aggregated value. Sum of sales is greater than or equals to 75,000. That's it. Will that not give true or false? Yes, it will get true or false. Drag it, put it in colors. See, can you see that the orange colors here? All these are actually values which are above 75,000. Understood? Conditional formatting, you can plan accordingly. Whatever you want to highlight, you can. That. Still, there are more other ways. I'll, I'll show you how to actually use this condition format. Right. We'll keep this aside for some time. 
let me just clear all this. Just now we saw the condition formatting, highlighting the regions or highlighting the numbers. What if I want to highlight top five values only? Top five. So this is the reports what actually you'll be creating, right? Top five values, bottom five values, the bottom top two values. In that case, how will I actually go and highlight those values? Say if it is fixed value, say in this case, it was any values which are above 75,000. I mentioned sum of sales is greater than or equal to 75,000. But how will I know that the top five values are always, you know, with fixed, uh, say, you know, sum of sales? It can change, correct? So for that, what you have to do is there are some tricks what you have to do. What is that? Let me show you. Say, I'll take the subcategory. Let me take the sales. Okay. And let me just sort it. Say this one. See? What are the top five? Say these are the top five values, right? I want to get top five values. I don't know. Which are all the top five values because the values might be keep changing. So for that, what we can do is we can create one calculated field. Here we have a function called as index. What index will do is it will give you the serial number. The serial number. I'll show you. Index, let's say, make it as function index. Index, that's it. No parameters. Let me go here and I'll say, okay. You can see that I'm getting this index. Drag it and I'll drop it here. Okay. Change this to say discrete. Discrete means it will become like a values, say labels, rather than becoming like a measure. You can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is not actually required in the table. I'm just showing you how this index will actually work. Can you see that it's giving me some number? Now, what I'll do is I will try to apply a formula here which will help me in filtering the data or say applying condition format. What is that? I'll go here, say calculated field. And here I'll say top five. I just created one field, top five. So what I'll do is here we just wrote our function, right? Say function index. Remember that we have written that function index should be less than or equals to five. Understood what I did? I have the number, right? One, two, three, four, five. I want top five. I made it as less than or equal to five. I'll say okay. Right, take this and I'll put it in colors. See, because the top five, so here I have this one, two, three, four, five. This will be true, and that will be color. Let me remove this index. I don't want this index now. See, convert this into chart. See, top five values. I want bottom five values to be highlighted. Bottom five values. Then what I'll do, I'll go here. I have a function called as last. Last means it will give me a serial number in reverse order. But the index start from zero. Say for example, it was showing one to 17, right? So it says 16 to zero. 16 to zero, why? Zero, one, two, three, four, five up to 16. Now what I'll do, I'll go here, I'll say, bottom five, say last should be less than or equals to four in our case. Why four? Because it's zero, one, two, three, four, five elements. Let's say, okay. Now what I'll do is I'll remove this top five. I'll take this bottom five and I'll put it. Can you see that? Understood. Index also directly I would have taken index of less than or equals to 5. But just to show you how the serial number actually comes, I just made it as one more column that is function index and I showed you the serial number. Understood about this? How we can actually use this bottom 5 or top 5. Right. So likewise, conditional formatting can be done by using any formula, but make sure that you are getting the result as true or false. Now you say, I'll convert this into table. Okay. Now, just take this. You can see that equals T slash F. T slash F is true or false. Now, take this and I'll just put it here. So, it is true or false. Let me remove this. 
Can I say this? False. True. Last time. True. Take this, put it in filters. You have these true values. Say true. Understood? So you can put it anywhere. Say if you want colors, I can put it here in color. If you want a filter, I can put it in filter. If you want the values, I can put it here. Understood? So that is the advantage of Tableau. So you can use one field in various different places. All right. So people, let me again create this one chart. That is region. Where is region? And then I'll take this sales. Remember that we did one condition format in here, highlighting. Now it is central, I think, right? Central or south or whatever. Let's take this condition formatting here, region, and I'll put it in color. What is that? Okay, it is central. It's highlight. I want to change this to south. What should I do? I'll go here, right click, and I'll say edit, and I'll change this to south. So, so people, every time you think I have to go there and keep on changing the value. Don't you think it is not so professional? We get the results, yes. But again and again, I have to go to that particular place and keep updating it. Instead, instead what I can do, I will, you know, I'll tell you one thing. We have something called as parameters. In Tableau, we have something called as parameters, which will help me in changing these things dynamically. What is that? Again, many of them actually have seen that, thing, you know, they think parameters are very difficult to understand or say. Uh, it is very complex to create the uh, parameters and apply that in the formula. No, it is very simple. See, the purpose, I'm just telling you, I have one small table. I'm trying to highlight the values depending on the region what I've given in the function. Now, I want this to be dynamic. When I say dynamic, I should be able to select instead of go and change, in the, change the values in the field, uh, that is in the calculated field, yes? So if that is the case, it is very easy for me to keep highlighting uh, by selection. So what I'll do is, I'll create a parameter. How to create parameter? Say, I want to create parameter for a region. Say here, I have this region. Right click, create. Can you see this? I have this parameter. Either I can go directly click on this parameter or I can go here, click on this arrow and say, create parameter. Anything is fine. Now, when I click on this create parameter, you'll get one small window like this, wherein we have to go and select all the values here. But otherwise, right click and I say create parameter. See, I already have got all these values because when I select one field, whatever values are there in that, the unique values will be already there. So this is one easiest way. I'll also show you in, in a different way also. Now what I'll do here, can you see that it says region parameter? Keep it as this. Here it says data type string. It is a string data type. String is what? Text, right? String means text. Then here it says the current value because already we have selected, say here we can see that the first value is giving me central. No worries, keep it as is. Then here it says list because we are creating a list here. So this is by default. I just right click and say parameter automatically. All the options have been selected. I'll also tell you manually how we can, how we can actually create in the next example. Now what I'll do, I'll go here. I, I did. I didn't do any changes here. Just right click on the region, created one parameter. I'll say, okay, done, over. What's the use of this? I'll tell you. Now what I'll do, if you see here, you can see this, the parameter what I created is available here, correct? Right click and I'll say, show parameter. Can you see? Remember yesterday we did this uh, drop down. remember? So if I click on this, can you see that I have this east, south, west, correct? I'm getting a drop down, the parameter what I created. My intention is to change these colors. Say I'll go here, say center. It is not happening actually. I'll go here, I'll say south, it's already there. I want, whenever I select these values, these colors should also change. That means I'm trying to apply the condition formatting on that. How to do that? What I'll do, I'll go to that particular formula, what I've written, the function, the field what I've created, right click, and I'll say edit. Can you see that south here? Yeah, remove this south. Give that name of that parameter. What is that we are given? Region parameter. Usually, what I do is I'll have one standard. I'll use a para in the beginning so that whatever parameters are everything will be listed. I'll show you next when I create the manual parameter. 
Now I'll say, okay, now you just observe. Okay, see, center. Can you see that? Let me convert this into chart so it will be easy for us to understand and just put this in colors. Swap. Now, see. So, rest. Yeah. Understood. No. Now, let me remove all this. We created one more. Uh, um, what is that? Uh, greater than 75,000, right? Yeah. So, what I'll do, let me take this. Subcategory, and then I'll take this sales. Let me create a chart. Swap, okay, and let's say we we'll sort it. Let me just see the value. Say we have okay, various different values. Now I want to create the numbers. Say there is different numbers depending on that the value should get highlighted. There. What I'll do. I'll go here, I'll try to create the parameter. This time, I'll create the parameter manually. I'll not create by using any fields. You can see that I have this. So usually what I do is, I'll go here and say, para. this is what I'll just give. So that it'll be easy for me when I'm filtering that, when I'm selecting that parameter. Para. Okay, the field name. Say para, then I'll say sales para. You can see this data type. The data type here, it says float, integer, string, and something like that. Sales, okay, that can be in a um, say integer number or float. Float means decimal numbers. If you want, you can give float or you can go here, you can give integer, anything is fine. So for me, I'll use in, uh, say integer because I want that to be in a whole number, not uh, with a decimal number. If you want decimal number, go and give the float. Now I'll say display format. Here you can see, I'll say number standard format, or if you think automatic, let's keep it automatic, not a problem for us because automatically it will take. What is the current value? Let's say for me, the current value should be 75,000. The current value. Now here, what I'll do, I can either select range or I can select list. So what I'll do is, I'll go here, I'll make a list. What is that? Say the value. So display 75,000. Your display as. Okay, you can change the values. You can say like this, you can give say greater than seventy. So what is this, and what is this? I'll tell you. This is the value which comes in the drop down. This is the value which we use for filtering. So I can keep both the same, or if you want, I can change this accordingly. This we give because it is easy for me to go and select, right? But in the back end, this will be the value which is working. Now I'll go here. I'll add one more. I'll say sixty thousand. Greater than 60,000. Then I'll say 50,000. Here I'll say. Then we'll say 40,000. Here we'll say greater than 40,000. Done. I just created one parameter that is for the sales value. All this I did manually. I'll say, okay, now done. Now what I'll do is here we had created one uh, for sales value, right? Where is that? What is that we had given? Conditional formatting sales, right click, edit. Can I say this greater than 75,000? So what I'll do instead of this, I'll say parameters. So, okay. Done. Now we'll take this. Is that we use say this one and put in colors? Can you see this value? What I'll do this parameter sales value right click and I'll say show parameter. Can you see it says greater than 75,000? Is it correct? Let's go here. See 79,000. This is 46,000, right? Now let me go here. I think only this is where actually, right? So what we'll do, we'll change the values and see. It's two lab, one lag. Okay. Let me quickly change the file. Say edit. Or we'll do one thing. Instead of subcategory, we'll take state only. So there we have all the values, whatever we have done now. So based on that value, it will 
So whatever parameter we given, right? So for that, this matches actually. Say here, what is that? 49,000. Say greater than 75,000. Can you see that? Greater than 60,000. Okay. 50,000. Understood? So I just took one value. So you can go and you can change the value accordingly. So this is called as parameter. So you can create your parameters and then you can apply that in the formula. Any, any, you know, any value you can just create and you can apply that in the formula so that whatever changes I do here, that will get applied. Understood? What is the parameter? Don't you feel this is interesting? Yeah. So people online, don't you feel that this is interesting? People? People online? Yeah. So this concept can be applied whether it is a simple formula or a simple uh, reports or complex reports. Anything you can actually do. Okay. Right. Next. Okay. Black screen is coming. One minute. Now is it fine, people? Now is it clear? Right. So people, how do you feel? People here, people online, how do you feel about Tableau? Interesting, right? A yeah, lot of things to learn actually, but very interesting. I'll tell you, there are so many interesting things. So many things are there. Right. Let's continue. Next is about grouping and set. So what is grouping and what is set? I'll tell you. Grouping means you're trying to group all the common values. Or you can make a group of your own. How? Let's say, for example, I have this subcategory. I will drag and I will drop. Okay. Now the subcategory has been grouped based on categories. Right. Let me take this category and I'll put it just before this. Can you see now the groups? Can you see here? Furniture, I have two subcategories. Office supplies, I have two subcategories. Technology has two subcategories. But I want to create one more group. This is by data. I have a data in that. My groups have been classified, but I want to create my own group rather than having the groups what we have here. How to do that? Let me tell you. See, I will remove this category. I want to group it. What I'll do, I'll go here. Let me just take the sales value. You can do the group directly also, but I'm telling you different ways. Let me take the sales value. I'll just drag and I'll drop. I'll create one. Visualization and then let's sort it. Done. I want to group say if you just check this, this is what the highest value. And if you keep going here, you can see that these are all very small values. I want to group all these small values into one group so that uh, you don't have to again see it's very small, right? So I'll combine all these four subcategories and make it as one category. But they are all different from, you know, they are different categories, right? So we have subcategories. There are three categories as well. But these three come from various different categories. I will try to group them. So these four, I'll try to group. How to group? Let me select this. Hold control and select whichever uh, so subcategories you want to group. Move your cursor here. You'll get one small window like this. And then, can you see this? There is one paper pin kind of thing. Click on this. Done. It is grouped. Now, you can see that here we have one paper pin kind of thing which came. See? It is subcategory group. What is the use of it? Let me tell you. Let me see. I have this normal, whatever we have, these subcategories. I'll take this group and I'll put it in color. Can you see that? This has got a different color now. That means these are actually in a different groups now. Now let me right click and say edit group. 
If you see here, can you see this? We have these four in one group and this one in another group. Understood? This is one way of grouping. Now, if I go here, let me convert this into table format. Okay. Now you see, these four are in one group. Previously, we had that uh, categories. If I bring that category, it was giving me office supplies, technology. You know, we had four different categories, right? But now if you see here, this itself is a different group. The four uh, subcategories and all the others are in different Right? This is one way of grouping. If you think I want to group directly, go to this category or any column. Let me select subcategory, right click and say create. I have this. I can create the group like this as well. How? Let's say I'll go here. I'll give a name. Okay. Subcategory group. By alpha. Say group by alphabets. Now, what I'll do, I'll select this. I'm holding control, I'm selecting and saying group. Can you see that? It became one group. I'll say group A. Now let me select this. I'm holding control and I'll say group. I'll say group B, Thomas, then here. Select till here and create one group and I'll say group others. You can see now I created three groups. This I created manually. Now I'll say okay. Can you see there is one column which got created? Now I'll take this and I'll put it here. Can you see that I'll get three groups? And then I'll take the sales column and if I put it here, see. It's already there. Sales column is there. So based on those group, I'm getting the aggregated values here. I want to separate it by subcategories. Take the subcategory. Where is that subcategory here? And I'll just put it here. In the middle. See? Can you see that group A? I have these. But these are actually again grouped based on categories also, right? If you want to know that category also, just take this and put it here. See? Group A is office supply technology. Group B and C. See? Understood. So likewise, you can create your own group as well. Got it? Got it? There is no limits for creating the groups. There is no limits. You can create any number of groups. Right? You understood about the groups. Grouping means you're trying to group all the required, uh, say, entities or say, the values and you can create the Done? Done. Similarly, there is something called a set. Now, what is set? I'll tell you. Now, let me take the same subcategory and I'll put it here. Can you see I have so many subcategories? What I'll do is, let me just take the sales value as well. You need not take the sales value also. I'm just showing you this so that it will be easy for you to create any kind of a set or group or something. Let me just make it as, okay. Now let me start it. So I want, say, I can select here also. Like, see, these are some of the subcategories. I want to make a set of who my cursor here. Can you see this? I have this one set. Click here, create set. I'll tell you the difference between set and group. Once I create it, say, subcategory set, I'll say, okay, done. Now, let me remove this subcategory. You have the subcategory set, correct? Let me take this and put it here. See, I'll have something plus in and out. So what is in? In means whatever is there inside that set. What is out which are outside the set, whatever we have, right? Now, grouping means it will group and it will aggregate the value. It will create one group itself, separate group. Set will actually filter. That means, say, now I don't have to bother at all. What is that? Say, for example, I'll take the subcategory and I'll put it here, right? There are so many values. I have a set which I've created. Just drag this set. Where is that set? Subcategory set. And here, see, this set. 
drag and then pulled in the filters. Can you see that? It is not aggregating. If it was group, it would have been aggregated. Now you see that set. It is trying to remove all the other values, remove all the other subcategories and give only these subcategories. Understood? So whenever you are creating any report and you want to have one separate section, one separate set of values, you can create a set and you can keep it. Just drag and drop that over. Simple. That is called a set. In that we have, you know, combined set also. There are so many other things that you can learn in that video, which I will show you in the end. But I'm just telling you how to create all this particular things. Okay. So this is how actually you can create the set. Right. Next. For example, I have one report which I've created. Okay. Any reports. Let me just go here. I'll create one map. Okay. Let me create a map. How to create map? I'll go here. I'll take the state. And then I'll take the sales value. Let's put it in colors. And I'll put it in size. Okay, I'll remove this. Yes. Remove this. I'll take the region and put it in colors. So that looks good actually. Yeah. Okay. I have a map. Okay. Also, I have some names here. If you think you want to give names, I'll go here and I'll put it in label. Okay. Right. There is a map. I want to know. The details about each state, the details. If you go here, I can only know about these details that is which region, which state it is. Right? So if you want any other values, say if you want to know the sales, I'll go here, I'll take the sales value, I'll drag and drop in the tooltip. If I move my cursor here, I'll get that sales. I want to know about the profit, I'll drag and drop the profit column in that tooltip. Yes. This is very simple. Okay. This is called as tool tip to get the information. But what if I want to get the entire information and there is a web page. I want to go. I want to check the web page itself. What will I do? So for that, there is one very interesting thing. I'll just tell you step by step. It might be confusing. I don't know if you guys know this. People have already worked on Tableau. They might think that it's very complex, but I'll tell you step by step how easy it is. This is called as action. Okay. What is that action? Say, for example, I'm in one sheet. I'll go to this worksheet. There is a tab worksheet. Here are these actions. Can you see that? Click on this action. When I click on this action, I'll get one small window like it will ask only in this sheet or in the entire workbook. Use this as entire workbook because when you create a dashboard, you can use this function the action there as well. Okay. Right. So here I can add action. Action is nothing but we call it as triggers or say action. When I click on something, some, you know, some function should happen or say some uh, operation should actually happen. So what I'll do, I'll click on this add action. We have various different actions here. I cannot explain everything. So I'll directly go to this, go to URL. I want to go to URL. I'll say in sheet two, Okay, this is my target. I have this URL. I need to specify the URL. What I'll do in this URL, let me open the website. Okay, there is a website, Wikipedia. Everyone knows this, right? Wikipedia. I'll say Wikipedia USA. This is one common thing what we have. And also we have uh, the state names, right? So it is related to that. I'll go here. I'll paste it. I just pasted it United States. Now, people, if you have any link for your products or anything, you can use that. So what I'll do, I'll go here. I'll say, okay, done. The link is created. So here it says open, say hyperlink. You can change that as well. I'll say open states. Okay. Here we have this menu. I'll make it a select. If you say menu, it'll give us a menu. If you say select directly, it'll open the web page. I will go here. I'll say, okay. Then say okay. Done. Now you just observe. I'll click anywhere. Can you see that? There is a web page opening. So what is the web page? It's opening United States. 
Let me click. See, it's opening in a it's opening only in a text states. But my intention is what to open the state what are clicked, not the entire country details. I'm clicking on one of the states. Let's say, for example, I'll go here, I'll click on this Mexico. If I click here, I should get Mexico details, but here it is giving me United States. Why? Because I given the complete link. Now what I'll do, I'll go here, I'll say worksheet, action, and I'll try to modify that. Let's modify that. Okay. I'll try to edit this. You can see this United States. Yeah. I'll remove this. There is a field called a state, correct? Which has got all the names, names of the states. That is in US, all the states. I'll go here, click on this insert. Let me just scroll down and see if I have a state we have here. See, I will select the state. When I select this field name, what happens? Whenever I click that particular state, the value will be appended with this. Exactly. Like the parameter what we did. Now I'll say, okay. And I'll say, okay. Done. That's it. See, I'll go here. I'll click on California. See, can I see that I'm getting details about California? Close. Let me go here. I'll just click on any of this. Say, this state. See? So, what it will do is here up to this, <coughs> the URL is common. After that, I have this state, correct? So likewise, we can actually use the hyperlink and get the website opened as well. Isn't it interesting? Yeah, these kind of reports you can create. Like this, there are so many other interesting options in this particular action topics. I'll show you. And that's the one. We have a separate uh, Videos for it, people. I will share it. All right. So this is called as action. Now suppose I want this to be presented in PPT or convert that into image, export this. There is one option where we can export it. Export as image data or cross tab to Excel. We can export the data whatever we have to Excel. Let's go here and say export this to image. When I say image, it will ask whether I need the title, the view, the caption. We have the caption here. So you're not given any captions here. So it will just show me whether I need all these options. Let's say I don't want this caption. I want only the title, the legend, whatever is there. If the legends are there, I want this. And then I'll say save. When I say save, it lasts for the path. Let's do one thing. So we'll take our folder itself. And here I'll say, say it's a map. So, let's go to the folder. Can you see this? I'll open this. See. The map has been exported. So if you do any other reports also, whatever reports are there, it'll get exported. You can put that in a PPT or you know, anywhere, wherever you want, or you can send it to someone that you can actually do. Let me go back. Let's come here to this particular report. Now, we'll try to export, <clears throat> say, export, I'll say, cross tab to Excel. If I click on this, the entire data is actually exported to Excel. Can you see this? So whatever reports I've created, that will be available there. Understood? So likewise, you can actually create any kind of reports and then export that in different formats, use that in your PPT presentation or anywhere, wherever you want to be. Done? All of you? Got it. Now, we understood about how we can actually create the reports and things like that. Also, how actually we can, uh, you know, use the actions, apply functions, then the condition formatting, then grouping, set, Many things we actually learned. So not very simple. So depending on your requirement, you can keep working on that. Now, after all this, we have something called as dashboards, what you have to create. So here, 
I have created some reports. We'll create the reports. I'll just show you a few because I cannot show the entire dashboard. But we'll go here and we'll see what we have in the dashboard. Let me just click on this dashboard. This is dashboard. Okay. Whatever reports I create, that will be available here. All the sheets, they are actually called as reports that will be available. The dashboards, I've seen what people will do is, you know, they'll just drag and drop here like this. Okay. So it looks very, don't look good, I think. It looks very horrible. And also it is very difficult to understand. Just drag and drop. Don't do this. Then what should I do? Because in Power BI, it is very easy for us because we have the canvas. We can drag and drop and I can place all the reports. Here, it is very difficult. See, if I drag and drop, the entire thing will get covered here like this. So what should I do? Okay. I'll tell you some tricks for this. So just follow that. First thing is, Let's make a dashboard very modernized, very, you know, nice one. Like what we do in this Power BI, same thing we can do in Tableau as well. Okay, most of them actually don't do, but I'll tell you how to do that. There's a trick for that. Let me tell you. So what I'll do, I'll go here. You know that we always try to create some, uh, um, say, what is that, image or say background image in the PPT, right? That we know that we did this in the Power BI. So what I've done, so I've just tried to create one report, something like this. Uh, not report the image. See, it's just in PPT what we have done. So if people know that we have done this in the Power BI, right? Power BI session. So same thing you can actually do it here. And what I've done is I have saved this. Yeah, do I have that? Okay, it's not there. So I'll just save it. Quickly, we'll save it. Okay, so here. Select all, control A. Control A, right click, and then we'll say save as picture. Okay, so we'll save it here. Here we'll save as background image. Okay. Now, how to get this here? Say in Power BI, we have an option of getting the image that is in the canvas. Here we don't have, but still, you know, I want that to be placed here. So, what I'll do here, I have something called as image. Okay. Just drag and drop the image part. When I drag and drop, it lasts for some options. So here it says, insert image, choose. Let's choose this and say, oh. done. Now what I'll do is I'll say fit image. Otherwise, you know what happens? I don't know the exact size. So depending on the size, we can actually do that. Otherwise, I'll say fit and I'll make it a center. I'll say, oh, if you have any image online, that is also possible here. You can go here, link to image. And then you can say, you can give the URL so that you can uh, get that, uh, say, online as well. I'll say, okay. See? Can I see this? The same image. I'll get it. So this is one trick what actually we can use. Otherwise, we cannot get the background image. All right. Now, how to get the reports here? In Tableau, we have to create the reports individually. I told you this, right? Yesterday also I told you. Now, suppose I want to get some data here. Say, for example, I want to get my logo. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, if I click on this image again, see, can you see that? It is covering something like this. I'll close this. Right? What should I do now in this case? If I drag, it is trying to, you know, occupy the entire space. Can you see this tiled and floating? Now, once you take that image, make it floating. Make it floating. And then here, I have this image. I'll just drag and drop. Now, I'll try to adjust it. First, let me take the image and say choose. Let me take the logo. I have the logo here. And I'll say center. 
fit and center and say okay see that's three sizes understood yeah right now we took the logo here so if you want you can resize that and you can do those things i want to get some reports here the aggregated values you know the card we use right summarized report so to do that what i'll do i'll create or what we'll do is we'll use this that can be here i'll create one new sheet i'll say total sales say people how actually we can do this i'll just take the sales value okay and i'll drag and drop click on this format so i just took this table format i have this values right now you can either format here or what i can do i'll go to this dashboard you can see this total sales this one drag it and drop it make sure that you are actually using floating okay and i will keep it here like this okay we need to format you have to do that let's go here select right click and say format we try to format now here i have the field i'll select the sum of sales i'll go to this here i have this uh, font as tableau book so whatever font you want you can just select so usually i select arial okay i'll just go here and i'll type arial here i'll take 16 and make it bold okay i'll see yes now alignment so if you think so you can do the formatting here also in the sheet or you can do it here also i'm just showing you both the ways let me select this and here we'll select this colors worksheet i'll say none but this will become uh, you know transparent in the back end and then we'll go to this font i want this to be white color let me increase some more let's say 24 make it 20 okay so you just check okay right then uh, there is alignment you just go and see the alignment so here you just try and see the formatting because there are so many things to format i'll say center and here this also i'll change to here okay People, you should have a lot of patience for this. So 18, bold. And this one also will make it white color. Okay. Save. See. Let me go here. Alignment and say center. And here we'll make it as fit and dark. Can you see this? So likewise, we can do for all the other uh, thing. So here, if you think I want to change the title, so it says sheet name, say total sales. So see, I will go here. I will check. So here it has become white color. Okay, so that's why you're not able to see this. I will go here. I'll say total profit okay now same thing i'll just go here i'll take this profit and i'll drag and drop here convert this into this thing okay some people what they do they'll go they'll format here so i'm not telling that you cannot format here it's left to you you can format here or you can go to this dashboard and then format usually what i do is i'll format here why because you know what happens if i format here i don't know again i have to come here and change it so here what I'll do, let me just reduce this little so that we'll have some space. See? Okay, now have some space here. And now I'll take this total profit, keep it here. First you try to adjust, okay. Later on you can format it. But people, you need to have a lot of patience here. I'll go here. Okay. 
this and we'll say fit enter. So if you say that what happens, it will just fit here. Then again, double click here and whatever changes you have done there, same thing we'll do here. Say a total profit and I'll change this to old. So whatever uh, we have given there, same thing, we'll do it here also. White color, we'll make it as 20. Right. And then we'll change the font to table. So we should have aligned the center. I think it's now top one is a little lesser than that. I'll just select this and I'll make it as 18 M. I think it should be. Now we'll go to this, right click and say format. And here, whatever formatting we have done, we'll just apply that. So just make a note of it, whatever formatting we have done, same thing we can do here also. So here I've taken this, let's say somewhere around, I forgot actually, I'll just take it 22. I'll make it bold. Here I'll say Arial. And then I'll go to this worksheet. I'll say no. This one has to be aligned center. So we'll go and we'll align that font. I'll say set. Okay. These two are not matching actually, but we can... Uh, Understood, right? So you can go and you can format it. See? So likewise, I can actually give other reports as well. Done? Okay. Now, let me go here. I'll name this as subcategory. This is subcat. Okay. Now, let me come back to this dashboard. And here you can see that I have the subcategory. Take this and I'll put it here. Let me make it as column chart. Let me sort it. Come back to the dashboard. Here I'll select and I'll click like this. Okay. Now I have this title. Suppose if you think I need this title, I can use it. Otherwise, I'll just try to remove this. Say you can also right click here and say hide title. See, we'll get some space. Then here we'll select, right click and say format. Then the format. format i'll directly go to this worksheet i'll say none you can see that it will become transfer yeah worksheet because the entire worksheet it is taking here in power bi it's very easy double click on that only for that particular report we get this uh, you know we can remove the background or we can make it transparency but here we have to go here and we have to, right you can see that and same thing like whatever formats you have done just try to do those formats here okay so if you want to reduce the font size you can select here and you can go you can reduce the font size here as well. So here we have all this. So I'll not go and keep telling you about all this formatting. So you can check that videos so you'll get that. Okay. So any reports is there. We can just keep adding here. Okay. See, it looks very nice. You can reduce. So if you format, it looks very nice. I'm just giving an idea of how actually you can create the dashboard. Let me go here. I will name this as map. Okay. Let's take this as well. I'll go here. And I'll take this map, drag and drop, like this. Okay. So I don't want this heading. Just remove this. See. See. You can see that. If I would have given only for that particular sheet, only there it will work. Now I can see that it's working here also. That means we can over here. We can see. Understood. So let me click here. Okay. So here we'll say fit. If you want to fit, say enter. So it'll fit. Enter. Select, say. <clears throat> Change this. It's already there the entire view right okay. right so i don't want this legend i'll just go here i'll delete this legend okay then here let me select this can you see this have this filter click on this filter okay now let me click on this can you see that's getting filtered
Can you see that? The values are getting filtered. So I can create whatever reports I want. I can keep adding here. And then whichever you want to get filtered, just select this, it will get. Okay. People are not going to teach you, you know, creating all this. So you can, because it's not a dashboard class, I just want to teach you about the tab too. So when you come to this dashboarding techniques, okay, then we can create only the dashboard, like what we did for Power BI. So we can take one separate session for dashboard itself. So there we can do, or if you have an idea about when we work on this Power BI, we've already worked on Power BI, right? So you can use that also. Yeah, the same techniques here. Only thing is you have to create the, uh, you know, uh, reports in different, different, uh, uh, what is that, uh, sheets, and then you can drag and drop them. But make sure that you'll be using this floating so that it will be very free where you can drag and drop your, isn't it easy, people, all of you, yeah, all right. So after this, we have, you know, something called a story. I'll click on the story. The story is nothing but whatever reports I have, I will be publishing it, okay? I can share it here. Share it in the sense, I'll be sharing that in the server. So till here only I can teach you because after this, I don't have the facility for uh, you know, showing you that in the server. But if you are creating this in public, then you can take that link and you can send it to your friends or someone wherein they can view that report, but that is not secure. Anyone can easily send that. Okay. Now how to create a story? What is story first of all? Story is nothing but the flow. How actually, uh, uh, you know, there is a report and we can explain the report, say in slide one or say in, in the page one. So we have these reports. Then again, next, what other reports are there? So it is like you're just telling the story for your client or say to the user. Now, if you see here, I have one uh, canvas here. I have sheets as well as the dashboard. Usually we take the dashboard, drag and you know drop it here. Don't drop it here and drop it here. See, I have this dashboard. I'm not completed yet, but uh, you know you understood, right? So I'll have the dashboard here. Now what I'll do, I have some individual reports. I'll consider that itself as some uh, you know different dashboards. I can drag and drop here like this. See, since I've not created more uh, dashboards here, I'm just taking these reports only. Let's put it here like this. It's not visible, you know why? Because it's white color. Okay, we have done. If you are getting confused, let me just remove this. Okay. Let me remove this. Let's have only these things. See? The different reports. What happens is when I create the, you know various different dashboards, I can keep adding that and I can navigate like this. All right. Now you can rename it or you can go here, go to this layout. See, I want this by numbers. Say so one, two, three. Or you can say dots. You know, in some websites they have the dots, right? Instead of the labels. So you can do something like this. So arrows, so you can use this arrows. Like this. So you can go to the layout and you can change this aspect. Understood? After this, I always keep this caption so that we can add the captions here. We can type the captions and then I will share it like this. See, in the server, I need to have the server. I don't have the server, so I cannot show this but after this once it goes to the cloud what happens is there you will get a link like in power bi we have that uh, link so you can share that link with anyone they can check that report say here they will get only this particular reports they will not get the data they can check the reports whatever data you are actually updating so that will be seen on them so this is the entire but a lot of things to work actually it's not that, you know, I've given the overview, right? All the options available. Still, there are so many options are available. I'll tell you how to learn that. Okay. So before that, how did you feel about the entire session? You learned about the tab room. So people online, you can message. Here, people are there offline. So they are actually answering. So you can message meanwhile. So how did you feel about these two days sessions? understood you have the confidence to work on this tableau now new journeys don't worry okay people who just stepped in who don't know anything about data analytics don't worry other some are group correct 
very easy right it is actually easier than power bi what i feel but in power bi we have still more advanced options there also we have you have to explore that some interesting options are there where you can work on the dashboard so whatever dashboards are working in excel same thing you can actually use in tableau as well. same concepts but you have different options the concepts are same right okay. all right so people whoever have part participated okay so they will be getting this uh, certificate of participation for people who have already registered for data analytics data science who are my students here offline who are online as well so you will get the course completion certificate in your uh, this thing and still if you want to get this certificate i have the link so i'll just share that link okay so if you want that certificate i'll just give the certificate link So the certificate link, I'll send that in the Telegram group also. You guys can fill this. People who are sitting offline, they can get this. People, this is the certificate link. If you fill this, then you will get this certificate. Okay, so please fill this by evening because I have a lot of other things to do in the weekends. So today only you have to fill. Otherwise, it will be difficult for me to get your certificate. So okay, this is the certificate link. You can. Uh, Fill this and you can get your certificate. People who are offline, so I'll give that in the Telegram group or in the WhatsApp group. Just fill that, you'll get this certificate. Okay, fine. Next. All right, so people, there is a community as well. So I'll just give that community link. So this is our WhatsApp group and Telegram group, you can uh, take this group as well. So you can just log into this. You'll get the material. So whatever materials are there used here, I'll be sharing it here in this particular group. Okay. Next, suppose if you think you want to connect with me, this is my LinkedIn. <clears throat> After you get the certificate, you can also post your certificate, certificate and you can uh, tag me as well so that I'll repost it. Okay. So anybody wants to follow me on YouTube and Instagram, that link also I'll share it. Okay. If anybody wants to give Google review, that also I'll share it. Is the Google review. Right. Okay. Right. So people, if anybody wants to learn end-to-end -end tablet, okay, this is for people who are new joiners, people who already enrolled for data analytics, business analytics, or data science. I'll tell you what you have to do. So people, I have the link here. I'll just open this link. So here, if you just scroll down, see all the videos are there. Somewhere around 13 sessions are there. Whatever I've taught in that every chapter, there are examples. For that, you have this supporting files. People who have taken this data analytics or data science, they already have this access. You can go, you can download the files and start learning. If you have registered and still you don't have the access, please ask Suma or you can contact Karachi. They will help you in getting the access. Okay. All right. So people who wants actually to learn this, the new joiners who wants to learn the entire, you know, uh, the Tableau. We don't have the live class as of now. So you can go and purchase this blended version that is 4,960 or e-learning videos, which is 399 rupees. This 4,960 will be with the support that is we'll get the videos and also we'll be getting the classes say you know whenever you have doubts we'll actually clear the doubts 399 rupees is actually for uh, only the video so we don't give any support we'll get all the videos so here all the videos are there in-depth videos up to dashboards and you have the supporting files as well. okay so i'll share this link you can go you can visit that particular link and then you can purchase that Okay, again, I'm posting this certificate link. Please fill this before evening because I also have one more session in the evening, right? There's one more session, right? Right, so if you want to connect, this is the two links, what we have is community link. And then you can also connect me with the 
LinkedIn here. I have given the links as well in this PPT. I'll share this PPT with you people. Okay. All right. Right, people. Thank you so much. Work on this. And people, <clears throat> as I told you, the community classes are happening, you know, but we don't have a fixed time. So as and when I'm getting time, I'm actually trying to teach you people because I have more other things, uh, offline classes, online classes, so many things are happening. So we have decided, okay, the classes, we are trying to figure out some time where we can meet all of us. And also you can message us your topics. So people online as well, listen. So you can message your topics. Okay, so for example, now we are creating the dashboard. Some of them doesn't know how to create this image. We'll take one session only on that particular topic. Let's say one hour, two hours or something. So why we are actually doing this is because we are heading into one more session that is uh, the placements guarantee the thing. Okay, so there I'm getting a lot of queries from uh, the companies. They're asking that you know whether they know this topic or whether they know this technology or something. So we are actually planning for a strong team where we can actually guarantee you some job. But again, I'm telling you that I cannot hundred percent guarantee you as of now. Like what others actually promise you, saying that uh, we get four offers in a week or you know 10 offers in a month that is not so true actually i'll tell you very frank okay but for that you need to have the complete knowledge complete skills complete confidence to get a job for that we are actually working out uh, because of which you know no, no. yesterday also i got a lot of uh, messages from the uh, you know the agency saying that uh, some of them actually not filled their resume properly so I'm actually working out on that as well. Anything related to placements, HR things also, we are actually working out. That also will be separate classes. But all our workshops, the community classes, whatever is there, it will be completely free. Okay, we're not going to charge. For anything for uh, the live classes, we actually charge for that as a separate uh, thing. But if you have any topics to discuss, please come out with the topics. We'll show me, uh, you know, have the classes in the. Uh, evening. Let's say in the evenings because I'll not get time in the morning. So let's see. Because I'm figuring out some proper time. So whatever time I get, you know, the fixed time will meet at that time. Okay. All right. So people, people who don't have to request, I, I will actually give. Don't worry. I think I'm doing this right. Whether you ask or not, I'm doing that right in Telegram channel. Yeah. Don't worry, you don't have to you know request. I will send. Okay. Don't worry, people. I'll send all the practice. See, I am doing this all for you people so that you can improve your skills. Okay. Don't worry. Right. But again, last you know, one minute. I'll take one minute of yours. So how was the session? How was the session, people? Great. Okay. Right, people. So let's catch in the evening. So evening we have this uh, session, right? What is that session? The internship session, right? So we'll uh, catch up there. So today, good that we actually understood about the tableau because we have this project. What we're doing today in uh, the um, internship is both Power BI and Tableau both are there, but more on a Tableau actually because the files, what we have to upload is Tableau files. Okay, for that also, all the files have been ready. So that I'll be giving, so you can use that and you can get your internship certificate. Okay, right people, thank you so much. People who are online. Thanks, Nandan. So can you suggest some freelancing for data? Uh, Arpana, we'll actually do that session, okay? So in the next session, we'll discuss that. Not in this session, okay? Right, people, thank you so much. So, catch you guys evening with the, the internship class. Take care, all of you. Bye bye.